Hello, my name is Paul Franzon, and this is a, a short video on the basics of the Verilog register transfer language as used in hardware design for synthesis. This is extracted from the course I teach, uh, Digital ASIC Design, and the uh, link to the course can be found at the bottom center of this page. What I'm going to do is introduce you to the basic constructs used in RTL, register transfer language in Verilog, that is used in hardware design and synthesis. Basically, Verilog is a, is a codified way to describe the behavior of hardware. So let's, for example, look at a flip-flop. If you're going to write in English the behavior of a flip-flop, you would write something such as the top here. That is, for every positive edge of the clock, the output Q changes to B equal to D. That is the behavior of a flip-flop as written in English. We can also write this as code. Code is really just a, a logically synt syntactic correct way of specifying things that you could write in English. So this is that structure as code. Always at pause edge clock, that is at each and every rising edge of the clock, the output Q becomes equal to the input D. Yes, this is a different type of assignment, but it's still assignment. And in the full course, we explain the difference between this and a normal equals. The specific code aspect that's been introduced here is this always at statement. That's a trigger statement. The items in parentheses are called a sensitivity list. When the truth of that sensitivity list is satisfied, it triggers the execution of this statement. Here, the sensitivity list contains positive edge clock. So on each and every positive edge of the clock, this block gets executed. Since the only element of logic, of digital logic, that behaves like this is a flip-flop, that means that everything assigned after an always at pause edge clock trigger becomes the output of a flip-flop. Now let's look at combinational logic and take a similar approach to producing a piece of Verilog that models the behavior of combinational logic. Again, we have a simple logic block here with a multiplexer, an OR gate, and an XOR gate. And how would you describe in English the behavior of this block? Would you write something like this? If A equals 1, then the output foo equals B, X, or C, else foo equals B or C. Well, I think you can see already how that can become a structured code in a formal language through a structure something like this. Here again we have the multiplexer, the if-else statement, the XOR gate with the caret, and the OR gate with the vertical bar. So we have if A is implicitly true, foo equals B hat C for the XOR gate, else, if A is zero, foo is equal to B bar C for the OR gate. But we still need the trigger for this statement in this case, this always at block triggers the execution of this code whenever A or B or C changes. Again, this is how actual logic works. Right? In the actual logic, foo is reevaluated whenever any of the inputs change. Well, that's the, what we're trying to model here. We want foo to be reevaluated whenever any of the logical inputs change. The code is describing the behavior of this piece of combinational logic in what's called a behavioral form. Verilog provides another way to capture the behavior in combinational logic. It's called continuous assignment. It begins with this assigned statement and it's a one line expression of a piece of logic. If you can write the logic expression as a one line piece of code, you use continuous assignment because it saves typing. This question mark colon structure is actually an if else statement, just in a more shorthand form. So again, this question mark colon is building the, is, is, is describing the behavior of this multiplexer. 
the carrot, the XOR gate, the vertical bar, the OR gate. Another thing you might be wondering here is how is this statement triggered? Well, this is the continuous aspect. This statement is re-evaluated whenever anything on the right-hand side changes. That is, there's an implicit trigger. Whenever A or B or C changes, it is re-evaluated. We just don't need an explicit always at statement like we did in the previous example. We can put all this together to get the complete Verilog description of a simple module. Uh, this is way too simple a module to have as a module on its own, but it illustrates all the major pieces of the Verilog language as used to specify hardware. We have a module name, in this case flip-flop, kind of simple. We have a list of the ports connected to the module. These are the logical inputs and outputs of the module that wires will be connected to from the outside world. We declare the directions of those ports and how wide they are. In this case, they're all one bit wide. We then have our local variable declarations. And Verilog is kind of simple in this regard. If we're describing hardware, we tend to only have one or two variables, type reg or type wire. Reg is used for any variable assigned in a procedural, in a block beginning with an always at statement. Wire is used in any block assigned with an assign statement using continuous assignment. We then have our code segments. These code segments are actually independent of each other. Notice the input to the flip-flop is specified after the flip-flop itself. Because the execution of the code is triggered based on this explicit sensitivity list in the always at statement or the implicit sensitivity list of the variables on the right hand side in this assigned statement. Because of that function, it does not matter the order in which we write these pieces of code. In fact, this is one key way in which Verilog models the implicit parallelism of hardware. And finally, we have the end module, meaning we finished building this module. So that's it. I've actually covered the three and only three general coding styles used to specify the behavior of logic and thus used to specify logic that can be synthesized to be placed on a chip. These three coding styles are always at some edge of the clock, Everything assigned after that becomes the output of a flip-flop. Always at some list. And in Verilog 2001, you can actually replace the list just with a star statement. Becomes combinational logic as specified by its behavior. It's triggered when any, ever anything on the parentheses changes direction in either, changes state in either direction. And finally, we have continuous assignment, where whenever anything on the right-hand side changes, the left-hand side is being re-evaluated. That's it. They're the three coding styles to specify the actual pieces of logic that go into modules to create large and complex chips. The hard part of doing this is not the coding. It's actually the design. That is working out the intended function that you then capture the behavior of using these coding styles. I hope you enjoyed that short section of this course. Uh, obviously in the course we go into a lot more detail than that in terms of how uh, many, many examples and many different ways of capturing specific logic behaviors, but still can gives you the essence of really how simple RTL is uh, in particular using the Verilog language. If you're interested further in this open online course, uh, please go to this link here uh, where it's explained uh, how the course is run and how you can even get course credit for it in the long run. Thanks very much for your interest.